What up, Tam? What up, everybody? What's going on? Hope everybody is amazing. I hope everybody is great. I hope everybody is cool. I hope the day is going well. I know for some of you, it is two o'clock. For others, it is one o'clock. And for others, it is also 11 o'clock. So good morning, good afternoon to a lot of you. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I have quick news. It's not really, it's not really a lot. It's not going to take long. Hopefully I don't cry, um, you know, but I'm going to get right on into it. So I've already shared this uh, with a few of my friends. Uh, not a lot because I don't have a lot. Thank the Lord. Um, um, but it has been a crazy year for me. Um, and when I say year, I mean from July of last year up until now. So almost a year and a half for me. It has been a crazy year and a half for me. And um, through this time, lots of life has happened to me. And um, some things on my own accord, some things out of my control. And it has literally put me in some weird spaces and weird, weird spaces and, and, and weird way of thinking and a lot of different things. And I had to take some time for myself um, to really kind of figure out where where I am, what's going on, how I feel with all these different things. And when you are someone who is in the limelight, when you are someone who um, has a platform, when you are called to ministry all at the same time, all while trying to deal with your life, um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And um, I got to a place where um, I don't know what you guys are saying. You're saying the video is cut out. Y'all can see me. Can y'all see me? I don't know if you can see me, but I'm, I'm going to keep going until somebody says, no, we can't see you. Or yes, we can see you. Yes, we're good. Everything's good. All right, bet. Anyway, so I got to a place in my life, you know, where um, spiritually, those who know me know that me and Jesus, we are like this, right? If you know me, you know that I love the Lord. It is my thing. I will consult him first before I consult him for anything. I won't, I won't talk to nobody else. I'll talk to the Lord before I talk to anybody else. You understand? Like, that's my thing. That's my guy, right? And when all when life started happening, I got to a place where I found myself instead of where once I desired to... Um, always seek him first, I got to a place where I desired, I didn't desire to do that anymore. Well, rather, I would only seek him because I had to. Um, because I was called, I sought him. Because I had asked church, I would seek him. Because I had a gig, I would seek him. Because I had things to do, I would seek him. But my daily commune and my daily um, just ha hab habitual routine of loving on him and being with him, it died. Um, and I had to get to a place to be honest with that, honest about it and say it was because I was upset with him. And a lot of times we get to a place in our lives where we allow ourselves to make crazy and dumb decisions or life happens to us and the first thing we do is we blame God for that. Um, why did you allow it? Why did you, what are you doing? Why are you make? Why? what's going on? Um, always placing blame rather than um, accepting blame. And because of my placing of blame, I decided that I was going to be petty and take myself from him, right? And because of that, more life happened, right? And yesterday, 
I'm not gonna go there first. But over time, over time, I found myself getting back into places like depression and sadness and anger and things I had healed from years ago. You know, things that I felt like I'd overcome and things I felt like I'd I'd moved on from and pushed pushed through. Um, found myself back in those in those places, waking up every morning heavy. Waking up every morning upset, waking up every morning angry, waking up every morning um, just just heavy. It was almost as if there was this black cloud over my head that never went away, that it never, it just always was there. And, um, but I got to a place one day where I was praying and God said, you are in transition, you're in a process, and I'm going to leave you here until you're ready to come out of it. And of course, my response to him wasn't okay. It was, you know, like, okay, cool. This is what you do anyway. You know, so you love to leave folks in things and you love, to, you know, that type of that mentality. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm a petty person and me and God have a really funny relationship like that. But I was in my, I was in my feelings, you know what I'm saying? I was like, whatever, you know, what, what fine, I'll be here. But in those things, in that transition, in, in this process, um, God was literally pruning me and, and, and really fixing me and, 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 and really, really doing a lot of work and showing me myself <laughs> and, um, and really showing me um, where I actually was, showing me my mistakes, showing me you know, where I, 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 I made the wrong decisions and the wrong turns and also just really showing me what was for me. And even though um, he was showing me these things and even though he was giving me these things, I still I still was I still felt heavy. I still felt depressed. I still I still felt, you know, all these all of these things, but I couldn't find it inside of myself to push past the the stuff. I just couldn't find, I couldn't find it inside of myself. So I would show up, give it all I had, because even when you're anointed and you're called, your gift doesn't die. You still have it. So I'm going to give it 130,000%. But going on stage or knowing I had to go on stage or knowing I had something to do, but didn't want to do it. And then doing it, Coming off stage, still feeling the same way. I don't want to I still. I don't know why I was here. I want to go home. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get out of here. I know that I'm called to people, so I'm going to do what I know I'm supposed to do. But I still don't want to do it because I, my, I, me, I, me, I'm not feeling it. So I had to get to a place where I was just fighting for it. I just woke up one day and started choosing not to feel that way. And even though I was having my moments where it's still, they would still, I would have my moments. It's like, I'm depressed today or I'm sad today. I'm angry today. I'm confused today. I'm whatever today. I don't want to be around. I just, whatever the case may be, I just didn't want it every day. But I had to get, get up every morning with heaviness on me. Like weight just felt so heavy every day, literally every day. And still would not choose still wouldn't choose to go sit with him and talk to him about it crazy but still waking up every day heavy waking up every day upset waking up every day but I had to choose against it because I got to a place I was like I don't want to I don't think I want to live like this no more I don't think I want to do it like this I don't want to I don't want to. I'm encouraging these people and telling them that they don't have to live like this. And I'm over here sitting over here living like this. I'm encouraging people that they don't have to be upset. And I'm over here upset. I'm, in t I'm telling these people that they don't have to be sad. And they're over there sad. I'm telling these people that they don't have to worry about what people think about them. And I'm over here worried about every time I get on stage, what people in the audience are thinking of me. Every time I go out to a place, I'm worried about who, who sees me and why they see me and why they know who I am. Every time I go anywhere, I'm thinking about who knows what and what they feel and what they're thinking about me. When a church calls me and says, I want you to come, why are they calling me to come? Are they calling me to rebuke me? Or are they calling me because they want to they wanna chastise me? Are they calling me because they love me? Are they calling me because they just really want me to come? Why am I? Why? 
So all these things are always constantly going through. Every time I go to a place, I'm getting teary eyed, so excuse me. If I'm going to a place um, every time with anxiety, every time I'm in a place with my colleagues, every time I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm anywhere, I'm feeling some type of way because I'm trying to figure out what everybody, what, what the temperature of the room is because I, number one, don't know whether or not, yeah. So I'm really, really battling because I know I'm called, but I'm embarrassed. I know I'm called, but I'm angry. I know I'm called, but I'm depressed. I know I'm called, but I don't feel loved or wanted. I know I'm called, but am I called? Does that make sense? And but still pushing, still pushing, because I still know that even in my haziness, even in my blur, even in my distortion, I still know that I am called to something. I'm supposed to do something. I have people attached to who I am and I cannot and will not stop just because I feel some type of way. And I got to a place where I just kept pushing. And I will be honest, it was a month ago, because it is September now, but it was the first week of August, second week of August. And I was rich, rich Talbot, my brother, he was like, brother, I need you. I'm doing another live recording and I want, I want, I want to come. I want you to come. And... Because he's my brother, I automatically said yes. Because he's my brother, right? That was the first thing I did, because he's my brother. But in the back of my mind, I was like, whoo, how am I get out of this? But for some reason, I also felt, the sa- at the same time, I felt like, man, I know that when I get there, When I get there, something, something's going to happen. But I pushed my way. So I went. And I'll never forget it. I went and Bishop S.Y. Younger was there. And Apostle Matthew Stevenson was there. And the whole entire night was incredible. And I had to sing. And I remember I sang. And I sang with everything that I had inside of me. Right? Um, and then Rich sang a song. I'm sorry if he's on here. If you don't want me to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. Um, He sang a song. He said, you've been graced for the call. So may you find peace in your suffering. For my friend, you've been you've been graced for the call. And for some reason, ooh, I don't know why I'm getting teary eyed now. For some reason. It hit me hard to realize that when God calls you, when he chooses you, you don't really know all the all the things you're going to sign up for. You don't know what what it is that you're signing up for. You're just saying yes. But here's, here's, here's the thing. May you, you find peace in your suffering because it's an honor to suffer. You don't get to choose what your life looks like after you say yes. You said yes. And God reminded me that night. You have been pouting. You have been throwing tantrums for a year. And let me go ahead and get you together. You told me that you wanted me to brand you. Brand, I I brand me Jesus. Brand me, oh God. So that when they see me, they see you. You prayed that prayer to me. That when you, when you walk into a room, there is no doubt that you are called by me. And that there is no doubt that I am with you. You asked me for that. 
And you have the nerve to sit here and cry, pout, be sad and depressed when you are the one who asked me to use you, to be upset that I am using you. How dare you? And number two, I suffered for you so that you could live and that you could have life and have it more abundantly. The least that you can do is repay me by suffering as well. It is an honor and it is a privilege to suffer. It is an honor and it is a privilege to go through. And then you be in a brat because I suffered alone. You have me to go with you while you suffer. So you're really not, a, you're not suffering as bad as you could suffer. The audacity of you. The pride you have. The entitlement that you have. So may you, petty God, be so, so dope, but he's so petty to me. So may you find peace in your suffering because you will suffer. Because you've been graced for this. By your asking and by my, my doing. So Matthew Stevenson gave me a word and Bishop Younger gave a word. And I took it with me and I felt the things turning, but I still was walking heavy, still felt heavy, still felt all these, these things. Y'all, I'm really trying to hold it together. So excuse me if um, I, it feels weird, if it's all over the place, I hope I'm going to, I hope I'm getting to somebody. But anyway, um, I go, and then later on that, that, that week, Friday, I get to Travis Green's CD release concert and the anxiety filled me again. Because this is the first time that I'm around my colleagues since my fiasco last year, right? And I have this, this feeling and I'm thinking in my mind, I don't, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be in this space. I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to. And the, the temperature of the room was weird. And I'll leave it there. The temperature of the room was weird, which fueled my anxiety. So sound check was cool. And the night was cool. But I got back to my hotel room and I prayed and I said, God, let me tell you something. The only reason I am here is to do what you have asked me to do. So I'm praying that you remove whatever thoughts and, and issues that I got going on with me today because I don't really want... I don't want me to get in the way of what you're trying to do. And he said to me, he said, if you're here, it's because you're supposed to be. And I will be using you tonight to prove a point to many. And I didn't really under, I didn't really understand. I didn't, I really didn't understand what that meant. I was like, I don't know what point you're trying to prove and why you're using me to prove it, but sure, whatever you do, have your way. And um, we get to the place, we get back to the venue, this thing hasn't started and it's packed full of people and things. I mean, it's packed with everybody you can think of and a lot of them people continue to fuel my anxiety. And I said, God, I just kept praying. I just kept praying in my mind. Whew. And he said to me while I was sitting on that, on that seat, he said, don't be offended. Do not take on the spirit of offense. I'm using you to prove a point. I said, okay, cool, 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 cool. I get up there. We do our song. The Lord comes in and we move and we keep it moving. Right? The next morning. 
I'm getting text messages and phone calls from people I haven't heard from in so long telling me, man, you are called, man, you helped me tonight. You freed me last night. You did what you needed to do. Thank you so much for helping me see things I've never seen before. Thank you so much for reactivating or reigniting my flot, my fire, my flame for this because I was going to quit. And I didn't really think that I had it in me to do this anymore. But when I saw you as you should be quitting and you didn't quit and you gave 130,000 percent and God used you, you showed me that I could be in a worse position and I have no right to quit. So thank you for for showing me what strength looks like. Thank you for showing me what suffering looks like. Thank you for showing me how to respond. Thank you for all of it. And I'm thinking in my mind, ah, what? What's going on? We continue. We continue. We're going. We're going. We're going. And the days are going by and things are still happening and life is still cut. Doors are opening and things are happening. And then here comes yesterday. Just fast forward. I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. Fast forward till today. I mean, yesterday. And Sunday, I was with Daniel Johnson. Whoa. I was with Daniel Johnson Sunday and he had a night of worship and God came into the room and there was a word that was given um, that was given and it was for me and I just was sitting there. I'm just like, thank you, God. I just feel like it's coming. You know, the, the, the turnaround is coming. The, it's, you're nearing the end of your process. You're nearing the end of your, your, your thing. You're in this place. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm thinking, God, woo, cause I'm irritated and I'm agitated and I'm tired because I feel like I'm in this space. And if you could just hurry up this process, I'm ready to get out of it. I'm ready to stop feeling like this. I'm ready to just go. I'm ready to let it go because at any day now, I will lose it any day now. I'm, I'm going to lose this thing any day now. I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm really over it and I'm really tired and I'm really tired of waking up choosing to be happy. I'm really I'm tired of choosing to fight depression. I'm tired of choosing to fight sadness. I'm tired of choosing to be I'm tired of choosing that. I want to get to a place where I don't have to choose it. It's not even in my vicinity anymore. I'm I want that. So please. Hurry up. I know it's coming, but hurry up. You understand what I'm saying? And here comes yesterday. And I was like, I didn't do Acts Church on Sunday because I was there with Daniel at We Worship. And here, and I do it on Tuesdays. If I don't do a Sunday, I'm going to do a Tuesday because I ain't going to miss no week. You know, we don't got time for that because there's some call to this. You know what I'm saying? Woo! And yesterday, I just kept feeling, I kept feeling this thing. I just kept feeling this thing, D, you, D, come see me. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, I'm going to do consecration at 6 o'clock. Before 7, I'm not going to lay on the floor and talk to you. Kept feeling it all day. Kept feeling it all day. Kept feeling it all day. I get in there around 5 o'clock, and I go lay. I lay. I lay. In my prayer time, I lay on the shower, I lay on the floor, and I'm praying, and I'm praying. And as I'm praying, you know, my normal due diligence, Father God, you're amazing, you're awesome. I know the protocol. You talk to him sweet, you repent, and you move forward and ask him for what you want him to do, and you move on, right? And I'm giving it to him, and I'm giving it to him, and I'm talking about how amazing he is. And I got stuck for a while. I got stuck on how forgiving he is, and I got stuck on how gracious he is, and I got stuck on how merciful he is, and I got stuck on how always dependable and reliable he is in when I'm unfaithful, when I'm not reliable, when I don't talk and when I don't come, he still reminds me that he's with me. He still reminds me that he wants me. And he starts reminding me that, hey, I got your back. And I start thanking, uh, thanking him and saying, thank you for never leaving me even when I left you. Thank you for keeping me even when I didn't want to be kept. Thank you for choosing me when I didn't want you to choose me. Thank you for choosing me to be me when I didn't want to, I didn't want to be me. Thank you. They start thanking him. And then I started repenting and I said, God, forgive me. For choosing sleep instead of choosing to come and talk to you. Thank you for cho- Thank you for keeping our head up. I apologize for being mad at you for being a good father. I apologize for being mad at you for growing me. I'm, I apologize for being upset with you for my my mishaps I, I apologize for blaming you i apologize for nip, for manipulating i apologize for for i and i just went and went and went and as i kept going and as i kept going and i kept going i realized that the only reason that i was in this place is because i was choosing to be here woo 
That was the only reason I was here. It wasn't because he wanted me here. I was here because I was choosing to be here. I was choosing depression. I was choosing sadness. I was choosing entitlement. I was choosing this place because it was the only place that made me feel comfortable enough to be a victim for the things that I, I did to myself. Hey! And then homeboy started speaking to me and he said to me, he said, D, you stopped praying to me. You stopped worshiping me out of desire. You stopped it. And then you started worshiping me and, and praying to me because you were called. You see, there's two different things. That's too different. He said, because there was once a time in, when you and I were just cool like that. And you just wanted to talk to me and you wanted to worship me and you wanted to hear what I had to say. But now you're only doing it because you know you're supposed to. And that's the reason why you're uncovered. I covered you because you wanted me. But when you started letting me know that you didn't want me, I had to stop covering you. <laughs> Woo! So the fact that all of that got you to this point, I'm glad to see you on your own accord. And I'm glad that you got here on your own accord. And now because of that, I'm covering you again. And not only am I covering you, I'm taking, I'm taking off all of these things that you have been experiencing, the depression and the, and the sadness and the anger and the, and the manipulation and the, and the desires and all of these things. I'm taking them away because you came, you came home. Oh, step. You came home. You came home. I've been waiting for this moment. And look, you hear. And then he said to me, then he said to this is what really, I literally leaped out of my shower. I won't lie. I hope this is not graphic to any of you. Um, but I leaped out of my shower and I ran. I ran around my house because he said this to me. He said, you passed. I'm like, what? I said, you passed. It's over. You are free. It's over. You passed. And immediately, I swear to God, guys, I swear, I don't know how to explain it to you. As I was explaining this yesterday, I was explaining to my friends yesterday, they were looking at me like I was crazy, but they were so happy. And they said, I said to them, I said, in 30 years, I'm 30. I've cried tears of sadness. I've, I've cried tears of anger. I've cried tears of, of feeling other people's emotions and pain. I've, I've cried those tears. But in 30 years, I've never, ever once cried tears of joy. I've never, ever cried because I was happy. But for the first time in my entire life yesterday and this morning, and I'm going to get there too, I cried Tears of joy. Because for the first time in a year and some change, I felt weightless. For the first time, I didn't feel depressed. For the first time, I didn't feel suicidal. For the first time, I didn't feel I didn't feel any of those things. I didn't feel none of it. And at first I was like, maybe this is just the moment, you know, in the moment when you worship, you just get real light. No, it was going so much so that you guys don't even know this, that physically my, vo my vocal cords have been in trauma for the past year and a half. Literally, so much of where I can't last past a certain amount of songs in a set. So I have to pace myself real clear. And there's always just this thing sitting here, sitting here. Yesterday, it was clear. There was nothing. So much so that I could breathe, take a deep breath and start coughing. I've been taking deep breaths for the last 12, maybe 18 hours. No cough. 
I think, I don't know. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know for some of you, y'all like, okay. And that's cool. My dude, do your thing. But let me tell you something. You ain't been living with me every day for the last year and a half. You ain't been living with me every day and every night. You don't go to bed with me as I cry myself to sleep. You don't wake up with me as I fight and choose to stay here every day. You weren't there. But yesterday, yesterday evening, literally lifted. And after I did my ex church, I laid on this floor and I cried and I worshiped and I gave God all I could give him. And then I thought about it when I went to sleep this morning, uh, when I went to sleep last night and woke up and I woke up timid, just a little timid. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was going to feel. And as I woke up this morning, I still was weightless. I had no thoughts. I had no thoughts of depression, no thoughts of suicide, no thoughts of sadness, no thoughts of heaviness, no thoughts of anger, no thoughts of what I'm going to do or how they weren't there. And I even did, I tested it so that I put myself in the position to think about the things that would trigger me. That things that would trigger me to go to these places, thought about them. He literally, literally turned my morning into dancing. He literally gave me beauty for my ashes. He literally gave me joy for my sorrow. I'm not joking to you. And let me tell you something. Y'all can take this as a small victory all you want to. Y'all may have came here for some tea. I don't got none for you. This is all the tea I got. But I tell you this, that from this day forward, when you see my face, I want you to know that I'm coming with a vengeance, not vindictive vengeance, not vengeance to, to prove something to anybody, but vengeance, meaning vengeance against the kingdom of the enemy. Because I really want him to know that when he tried to take me down, my G, you didn't succeed. And you should have taken me down when you had the chance. Because now that I'm free and weightless, and the only thing that's weighted that I'm carrying is the glory of God, I want you to know that I'm about to smash on you. And if you are called to me, and if you are called through me, you better be ready because there is next level and next height coming in this season. If you are called to Acts Church, I'm calling you to a higher standard because we have work to do. If you are called to anything connected to me, if it's the Walls Group, if it's friendship, if it's family, I'm calling you to a higher standard because this guy right here, I'm not taking this new freedom lightly. And with all this freedom and all this newness and all this strength that I just gained. I'm exhausting it with everything I got in me. You understand? I just want to make sure you understand. Homeboy, God that is, homeboy said to me, say these things. I am strength. I am healing. I am authority. I am wealth. He said, say these things. Say these things. I am strength. I am healing. I am authority and I am wealth. I wrote some stuff down. I'm not sharing with you guys now, but I will. But I wrote that down and he told me to say this. He said, you will say this and you will say it every day and you won't have to speak, meaning speak it over yourself. You're going to say it because I need you to understand that it's who you are. Which means the only thing you need to do at this point is walk in the fact that you are healing. You don't have to be healed. You are healing. You don't have to find authority. You are authority. You don't have to find strength. You are strength. You don't have to find wealth. You are wealth. You just walk and it will be in this season. So for me, let me tell you something. 
there is a new, I want to, I want to use the words I would normally use, but it's a lot of people on here and I don't need y'all trying to mess nothing up for me right now. But let me tell you, I, the, the, the Negro in me is up and it is ready. I don't really, I want you to know it. I want y'all to know that it's on and popping from this day forward. Do you hear me? I decree and I declare that every person on this live, all 700 and however many of you there is on here, every person on this live, that you find it inside of yourself to get back to God the way you know you're supposed to and stop playing with these things that are plaguing you and plaguing your mind and plaguing your heart. Because the reality is, is that you just want to be a victim. I'm sorry, I'm coming for your neck today. You want to be the victim and you don't have time to be that because as you choose victimization, my G, you are losing out on the fact that there is a beautiful, abundant life waiting on you. I'm here to tell you that you don't have the time to play victim. You don't have the time to be entitled. You don't have the time to wait on somebody to pat you on the back and say, hey, I see you. No, 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 no. You don't have the time for that. You don't have the time. You do not have the time to wait on somebody to throw you some money. You don't have the time to wait on somebody to throw you some healing. You don't have the time for somebody to come and give you a word. You don't have the time for none of that. What you need to do is you need to get up. Mm -hmm. And you need to go and sit with the father and also sit with the therapist and get yourself together because you got things you need to do. There is a calling inside of you and your issues and your thoughts and your hurt feelings don't have time. We don't have time. You don't have the time. There is more. Get up. Take up your bed. And walk. That's it. Take up your bed and walk. Weed ain't doing it. Drinking ain't doing it. Sex ain't doing it. He ain't doing it. She ain't doing it. The job. It ain't doing it. Stealing ain't doing it. These sex parties ain't doing it. Heroin, I see you. It ain't doing it. The lying manipulation ain't doing it. The relationship won't suffice. I'm on your neck today. I don't have the time to play and, and, and act like we don't know where we at. We all know where we at. Let's talk about it. It's not working. So what are you going to do? Get up. Take up your bed. And walk. Because if you don't take up your bed. Who else going to do it? Take your bed out of the bathhouse. Take your bed out of that relationship. Take your bed out of that house. Take your bed. Take, take your bed and walk.
Because if you don't, who will? There is someone who wants to see you still in that bed. And the people around you, if you're not careful, are being used by that young person, which is that man, the enemy, being used by him to keep you in that bed. Because the longer you stay in the bed, the longer it'll take you to get up and walk. Get up. Because I got up. That bed right there. Get up, man. Get up. It's the least that you can do. <laughs> get up. Just get up. Get up. Get up. And let me let me give you this. I hear you, compassion. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. You're justified in your feelings being hurt. What happened to you? It's real. It ain't fake. It happened to you. The decision you made, it was definitely ridiculous. We understand. I understand. I do. Look at me. Look at me. Me. I understand. I know you are. I know you see me singing. I know you see me glam and glitzing. Look at me. I understand that you cannot get over the embarrassment. I know you are. I know that you feel guilty. I know that you feel ashamed. I know that you feel like you're suffering because of somebody else. I know. I get it. I get it. But get up. Because once you get up, you won't have to suffer anymore. Get up. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Get up. There's more. This is not your in place. Woo! If you look around you, wherever your bed is laying, that's not your in place. And I know how you feel because I remember laying in my bed thinking that this was it. This is all you have for me. This feeling is all I have for the rest of my life. This is what's going to walk with me for the rest of my life. This is what's going to this right here. This is it, right? I was prepared to stay here. I was prepared to make my bed here every day. I was prepared. Matter of fact, I was already making my bed there every day. I was prepared, but I'm telling you. It's the trick of the enemy and the trick of the mind. Get up. Get up. The toxicity of that relationship is not where you're supposed to stay. (laughs) Begging someone to love you is not the bed for you. That is not where your bed is supposed to be. Begging for someone to be what you need them to be is not, it's not, that's not where your bed is supposed to be. Take up your bed and walk. There is more. This ain't it. This ain't it. This, this This ain't it. Your family, I'm coming for you, man. I'm sorry. Your family, they're family, but that doesn't mean that that's where your bed is supposed to be. Take it, take up your bed and walk. 
This, I want you to take a look around. And when I say take a look around, go in your mind and see where you are. This ain't it. This can't be. Do you think that this is what, this is, this is all that God has for you? No. No. There's more. So. Nice to meet you. Those of you who don't know me, because I can tell that there are a lot of people who don't, and you're just on here. My name is Daryl Walls. And today, I can scream out to you with boldness, confidence, and assurance and let you know I am free. And it feels so good. Bam. See? No coffin. None. I just did that just to do it. I didn't even do it. Just I didn't even realize. Listen, come on, man. I'm telling you where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. Pleasures forevermore. Transforming power. Take up your bed. Get it out of there. And go make it in the place, in the presence of God. And be free. Sheesh. Be free. Some of you need to recommit today. Rededicate yourself today to two people. To yourself and to God. Because part of the reason why you are still laying in this place is because you've dedicated yourself to things and people which cannot su sustain you in any capacity. Rededicate yourself to yourself and to God today. So Father God, we thank you for being who you are and for doing what you do. You're so dope. We don't even know why you are this way. We don't deserve your goodness, nor your kindness, nor your mercy, nor your, your grace. We don't deserve your love. We don't deserve any of it. But you have made it so that nothing can separate us from it. All proving that you just dope like that. So we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for keeping us all while we choose to be victims. We thank you that when we make our bed in hell, you are still with, with us. We thank you that you are a good father that is chastising and correcting, but also gentle and loving. We love you and we thank you and we believe in you. We believe that you died. We believe that you rose with all power in your hands just for us. And that because of that, we have life and we have life more abundantly. 
We thank you that there is no condemnation to us who believe in you. We thank you that you trust us with the life you've given us. We thank you that you've chosen us to suffer with you. Woo! For it is an honor to suffer with you and for you. And we know that at the end of the day, it is all for you. That there is nothing that is bigger, more powerful than you. You reign, you will always reign, you rule, and you will always rule. The throne is yours, and you will never ever give it up. And with that being said, we honor you, for you are the King of Kings, and you are the Lord of Lords, and there is no one greater, no one better, none more powerful than you. Ah, enemy. Satan, Lucifer, devil, whatever you like to be called or whatever I choose to call you today, you lose again. You lose. That is your position. Loss. That is your position under my foot. That is your position to be treaded upon. So I don't have any respect for you because you have no power. And there is no one or anything that will change my position on you. You exist. You have influence. But you don't have power. And with that being said. Enjoy your loss. And the many more losses you will continue to have. Matter of fact. Just go ahead and accept the fact that you've lost. Because at the end of the day. Whoo, Our defending champion is every day, Father. Why? Because it's the least that we can do. So, Father, as we burn ourselves, as we present ourselves as a sacrifice and we burn this, burn this altar, Father, let not our smoke scatter. Let it be. Let our aroma be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, God is exalted and let his enemies be scattered. God, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for the victories that you have won today. We thank you for the glory that you have taken today. And I thank you for the benefits that you have given me today. In Jesus' name. And I pray over everyone here that when they take up their bed and that they walk, their eyes will become clear. And their ears will come and they will be able to hear clearly. There will be clarity like never before. That their ears, their, their ears will be tuned to your frequency in the name of Jesus. We love you, we bless you, and we give you glory. It is in your name we pray. Amen.